Hi everybody, I am Bia McGriff and uh, this is our first installment of the Relevant Issues in Youth Sports podcast with our featured guests. We're just going to go through and introduce ourselves, especially because this is our first podcast. I am um, the owner of G&G Fitness and the co-owner, co-founder of Athletes United. I played uh, semi-pro volleyball overseas for two years, played in college. I've coached for over 10 years, everything from five-year-olds to men's college volleyball, and just have uh, a lot of concerns about youth sports here in the Eugene Springfield area specifically, and we'll get into that. And I'll let these gentlemen introduce themselves. I'm Leon Ireland, one of the co-founders of Athletes United. I coach basketball, coach football, uh, been coaching for since 2011, been playing since I was nine years old. Went to college, uh, Humble State and uh, Southern Oregon University. Uh, landed myself out here in uh, Springfield, Eugene area, here to, to, to try to get the best out of uh, younger kids, just day and age. I'm Jimmy Jeanette. I'm a founder of Checker Pass Mixed Martial Arts Outreach. It's, uh, I think it's one of Eugene's newest nonprofits. We get together and we uh, put on a lot of free seminars for children, uh, pages 5 to 19. Um, for instance, we have one coming up at Willamette Lane on the 24th of September. We just get the kids together, um, you know, just show them some moves, put on some demonstrations actually. I partner with some other fighters, I'm a mixed martial artist, I'm a professional fighter, uh, two-time heavyweight champion, I've got my third title fight, a professional title, lined up uh, January 28th right here in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, my next match is October 1st for the King of the Cage, but back to the youth clinic. Um, at this youth clinic, you know, we get kids, um, everybody's welcome, open to the public. Um, there's plenty of room for everybody at Willamette Lane. We get the children together and um, kind of teach them, you know, show them some demonstrations. Um, break them off into small groups, you know, kind of with their age groups. And um, they team up with several coaches. They just run through some drills and stuff. No contact, you know, nobody's getting hurt or roughed up. It's actually a lot of fun. Just fitness. And then we also kind of mentor them and just talk to them about some important things that might help them in their life, primarily staying away from drugs and alcohol, but their minds develop. All right, so actually let's go ahead and kick off on that note. Um, Jimmy, why do you think that it's important? Why? What made you want to start that program specifically? That's a great question. Um, just like you guys, I was a promising athlete growing up. Uh, basketball was my best sport. I'd say right now MMA is just because of the hard work and the diligence that I put in. I think I've actually achieved a little further than that. Well, actually, I know I have went further. But um, basketball, that was my first love. I was very, very, I excelled in that sport. But I also uh, had a really tough home life, you know, where drugs were being served or sometimes, you know, they were being furnished for me to go out and sell um, to my fellow classmates and things. And, you know, and, I, and then I also got addicted myself. You know, a lot of ways, I just don't think I had a chance. <clears throat> but by the grace of God, we're here. I got my act together. It took a lot of years. And I look back at my youth, and I see, like, where I, I went off the beaten path there, so to speak. And so um, I'm going to kind of delve a little bit deeper in that. How did sports, or do you feel that sports had any effect on the discipline that you have now? to be able to come out of that situation and turn around and give back to the community. Yeah, um, you know, I had a taste for that when I was younger. You know, just like you guys are trying to come up with the, the children and stuff coming up. <clears throat> you know, I had a taste of, you know, athletic successes, the teamwork, the camaraderie, um, you know, just that self-esteem inside, you know, and then, you know, I went a different route, to put it lightly. Um, you know, and here we are back at it. I'm an older man, I'm almost 40. I turned 40 in June. and, and uh, if it wasn't for the commitment and, and, and trying to push yourself a little, you know, putting extra work. Today I put in three hours already. I worked with Coach Myron Johnson, um, worked on my boxing for two hours, and he had me out running on the highway like, just to start the, and that's tough on the big guy, you know, but, uh, you know, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, but you guys know how it is, it's the hard work. Um, and then I went in um, at Art of War over there and put in an extra hour, so it says favors are prepared. All right. Um, Leon, we'll have you touch on that too. That sports was a big part of your up upbringing and what you do now. So we'll have you um, tell a little bit about that. From Berkeley, California, Bay Area streets. You know, it's not for young athletes actually coming up. So I mean, you get caught into drugs. Like a lot of my friends end up going left. 
instead of being right. So uh, me coming up, I, I didn't have no role model or anything like that. And the drugs played a big part of my home too. So me wanting the will to get about uh, the situation that I was in uh, played a big part. So uh, as I was growing up, I was raised by my great grandma. You know, she didn't know nothing about sports or anything like that. But I also had like, a partner. That was my uh, partner in crime was my cousin. He had the same grind and wanted to get out of our situation too. So we both started playing sports. Uh, first started with football. And I fell in love with football. You know, all my friends was playing, so it was just like something to keep going and going and going. Sports then was more Everybody go hard, you know, coaches push you as hard as you can, and nothing sense you. you know, nowadays they kind of solidify the sport of football and, you know, more rules. But uh, as soon as I, you know, started to get older and started to realize things, end up getting pushed to go to college. So I tore my ACL and it kind of put me out of loop. I got depressed and uh, kind of missed out on going to the NFL. And by that, it was just like, okay, so what do I do now? You know, I tried to rehab and come back. And then once you, like, once you start college, you know, the time you keep going. Like, you got four, you know, five to play four. So my clock ran out by the time I had rehab and came back. So. I started playing in semi-pro and been pretty successful playing semi-pro with a tour ACL. And uh, you know, I got to the age now to where I can I can give back to the community and uh, I got a kid and he been more, you know, of my project, you know, the teaching them higher learning higher physical education and, you know, just having them more of a, a, a higher standard. I keep on with that page and, you know, as he get older and the more I get older, it's the wisdom that counts. So I like giving back to the community and showing kids that, you know, it's not just but nine-year-olds, you know, teach nine-year-olds with nine-year-olds. You can also give them higher learning and they'll figure it out, you know, the more that you push it into the brains. So. I'm going to um, kind of just really open the floor. So I'm going to go a little bit into my background, which is, is quite different than these two guys. And um, you guys can feel free to chime in whenever. My family life was a little bit different. My parents went through a lot of stuff and I was the oldest girl in Polynesian families. The oldest girl is responsible for like everything when the parents are working. So my younger brothers and sisters taking care of them when my parents had to work in order to provide for the house. Um, my parents were very strict. I had to maintain, I had to have a three nine or higher to play any sports. If I did it, then it was done. And my mom did not play with stuff like that to where volleyball was like my out. That was something I fell in love with. And I've found ways to get out of the house to play that sport. And when I first started, I started with a bunch of girls that had already been like five or six years ahead of me. And I didn't know what I was doing. My mom refused to come to my games because it was embarrassing to, to watch me play. And, you know, I battled out and ended up being NVP and having multiple accolades. And it was just, it was something that I fell in love with and something that I look forward to now, even as adult raising my kids. But with that being said, Competitive sports was is just a different drive. I think that it provides a different mental focus, a different mental clarity than you would get playing at a recreational level where it's just for fun. And what that did is it prepared me for real life situations that I've gone through growing up, struggles that I faced in college with more personal self image issues and being able to come out of that, keeping a strong mind, strong focus and really being a leader, I think competitive sports, if you guys, you know, you guys can agree or disagree, really sets you up to be a leader in life, be it in the workplace. 
even as a parent, you're able to structure life a little bit more because you already had to do that as an athlete. And one thing that we're trying to do really heavily here is get athletes to understand the amount of work ethic it takes to be an elite athlete. The programs here are a little bit under um, sugar-coated. It's underdeveloped. It's not kids have a false expectation of what they actually have to do to play on an elite level team, where if we take our youth groups that we have now that are beating all these teams or, or um, you know, are undefeated or whatever, and we were to take them out of the state and have them play other organizations, that it's going to be a whole different ballgame. I'm not devaluing the level of the athlete that we have. What I'm saying is the athlete is not pushed to their full potential because of the youth organizations that we currently have here. So for you guys with some of the, the kids that you guys have coached, you know, like how do you guys feel about that? Have you seen kids that were elite level and the different mindsets that they have um, and progressions that they have uh, being with kiddos that really aren't up at that level? I mean, I see, I come across all, all type of kids. When you end up, you, I mean, you have probably one or two cream of the crop kids that been have been there that have that heart, that thrive to, to be better, and that, you know, and that's only from them having probably like an older brother or something that played before them and that already taught them. So, but you have kids that, the only, only kid that don't really know nothing about the sport I personally think that it's the it's the parent. You can push your kid to play, but also you gotta understand that it hurts to it's like football. If you go out there and half ass it, then you will get hurt. But you know, if you go out there and wanna learn and, and go your hardest, then you'll be just fine. But no matter what, it's all about how, how much work you put into it. Jimmy? Yeah, um, this is a, the first thing, I don't know if this is directly related to the questions you asked, but the first thing that comes to mind for me is, I think every every kid out there, every athlete is worth it to be the best that they can be. <clears throat> and, you know, what that means to me is, you know, finding, you know, an appropriate program that's going to bring out the best in you, appropriate people that work with you. Um, I like hearing your story about how you said, you know, you went out there and you didn't really even know how the game operated and then just worked your tail, tail end off and you're able to excel and become an MVP and get some of those gifts, which helps you in the future and some things that might come up, you know, your way. Um, I know for me personally, you know, I'm 20 years removed from being a kid, 25 years removed from being a kid. And I just, uh, I hang out with the winners, guys that are in there and girls that are in there putting in the work, putting in the reps every day. Um, you know, I'm a little slower now, um, the reflexes go and things like that, but uh, we're still going to achieve athletic greatness. And athletic greatness is giving your best when the best is required. That was a quote directly from John Wooden, uh, those great uh, UCLA teams back in the days of Bill Walton, Kramer uh, Bujabar, or Lou Alcindor. You know, and I've felt that before. And what it starts is, you know, you get your butt to practice. One of my sayings is start small, start now. You know, every day we're chipping away at this. It might just be, you know, just the proper nutrition, trying to make some time for some rest. Um, like I said, hanging out with winners, you know, just like we're hanging out together right now, you know, with a bunch of winners, we come through, we, uh, we committed to this, we come through, we come here and we share our thoughts and our experience and our hope. I think that's exactly why we started Athletes United and we're also a nonprofit organization for youth sports and that's, that's, that is the key right there. Kids, adults even, and we, we know this now as adults, that you can't excel, you can't get to the highest level you can possibly get if you are not challenged. Because if you're not challenged, then you don't have anything to drive for. You're already the best. And nine out of 10, 99.9% .9 of the population, be it adults or kids, they're gonna work hard for something if they know that they have to. If they know they don't have to, then why? Why, why would they push any harder? So then we are limiting by this mosh pit of youth sports, and I'm not, I'm not dogging any youth sports. Let me just make that very clear. I'm not degrading any organizations in particular. What I'm talking about is the setup of the organization and not understanding the value in separating kids that have the ability to excel and kids that just want to go and play for fun, like recess.
And there is definitely a difference. What he said there, winners hang out with winners. That's exactly the point. When you put a group of, of, of elite athletes together, they will push, they will compete, they will learn to compete and they can keep getting better, they keep getting better, they keep getting better, they keep getting better. If you have elite athletes with non-elite athletes, and there are some, let me just be real. There are some kids that just don't have it. Uh, you can call it what it is, you know what I mean? But there are, and there's kids that naturally have it. Now, I'm not saying that the kids that don't have it can't be coached to get there, but there is a certain potential li limit for each kid. And as coaches and being around kids and coaching kids, you can kind of see that potential play off, even in the kid that is like super raw and like Gumby and lanky. You can see potential in those kids if they have it. But that that is that's exactly what I feel, what we feel is wrong with youth sports here. I love, I love that saying, you know, winners hang around winners. And like growing up, you know, if you if you play a sport, but you hanging around somebody that do drugs or something like that, you, it sidetracks you. You know, you're not focused on just, you know, being that winner. Just hanging around somebody that, that have that same thought, that same pickup that you got, and that want to get there too, and that's what it's all about. How do you define what a winner is, is, you know, somebody that's, you know, eager to get there. What is your defini definition of an athlete? Both of you guys can kind of hit on that. <laughs> it could be many things, but more of my definition of an athlete is somebody that don't just work when you come to practice. He's working 24-7, even if it's just doing push-ups at home or even school-wise. Always, like, what, what my son used to do, he liked to read everything, that, like, every sign that he sees. You know, even if he's not in school, he's going to read something. He's reading something. And you got to have the whole 360 movie. Having your grades in school from working... That doing that extra work when you're not at practice, uh, learning plays when you're not at practice is what you do outside. It's like outside of practice or outside of school. You know, on the athlete thing, I've never really thought about that so much. I mean, <laughs> every once in a while, like, you'll see somebody playing their, some sort of activity as a sport, and then I'm just like, man, I don't know if darts is a sport or, or you know, billiards or things like that, but, uh, <laughs> I don't really, I, don't, I really don't have an answer for that one. What I kind of look at is like the professional side of things. Um, I think whatever level of sports you're into or anything in life, you know, if you come at it like a professional, you feel really good inside about that. And I'm a professional athlete. I wanted to become, I was a marginal, my record is mediocre. I'm eight and eight with eight knockouts. Um, I fought some substantial people. Um, and it was just time to turn professional. And what happened was, was I learned how to prepare properly. I learned how to cut weight properly. I, learned, I suited up and showed up for practice day in and day out. And I'll come at it like a professional. Like I said, we'll achieve that athletic greatness. But <clears throat> even on my job side, I get to go out there and I get to, okay, am I being a professional? Am I fit for duty? Am I getting the rest? Am I hydrated? Am I, I have food, you know, a proper nutrition? That's one thing I would like to encourage people to think about. Because even a freshman, you know, a JV player, eighth grade, you know, whatever age group you are. And I know, you know, with the little, little kids, it's maybe tough to wrap your mind around it. I'm going to counter Jimmy a little bit on this one. I don't think that it's too early to start getting kids to understand the value of nutrition. And I see that really heavily here. I think that parents poorly guide their kids and what it takes to be a great athlete starting from nutrition. You're feeding your kids. And, and I'm not saying like an on everyday, I have four kids and my kids eat McDonald's sometimes. They eat Taco Bell. We eat fast food because that's just the type of lifestyle of being a parent. You don't always have that time so that you do have outs. However, on a consistent basis, are you preparing your, your kid to be not just a healthy athlete, but a healthy kid? So I'm getting a lot of people now, uh, adults now that I train, and they're, they say it to me all the time, I really wish that I would have had healthier eating habits as I was little or when I was younger because I wouldn't struggle with it so much now. But then they have their kid and they're delving the same eating habits to their kid and then they, they expect their kid to just turn around and change it by the time they're like 12 or 13. 
But if you get kids to understand the value and nutrition of what they put into their body, how that, how that propels forward and the type of energy that you have in your day to day, and also being an athlete, which is triple more important than, than just the people that aren't, aren't athletes, because athletes really put their bodies through a lot of stress. Your bodies need so much more as an athlete. We have kids that come to practice without water. That's just, I don't get that like at all. You know, dehydration is a really, really serious issue. Um, kids that aren't drinking enough water and, you know, it's like a soda, whatever. Every now and then, yeah, great, moderation. But if, like, I have a cousin that plays in the NFL, was a great athlete naturally, so didn't really need to worry about nutrition. But now as they get older, finally realizing, oh, crap, I can't eat a bunch of poly food and... <laughs> You know, I can't eat, you know, Kalua pig and all that stuff all day long and be able to, to to continue to progress and train hard as we get older. It plays into the type of muscle growth you have later, the energy levels that you have, your joint health and strength, um, that sort of thing. So I really, and I think that, that that's a big, big, big issue um, for a lot of parents right now. It's never too late. I didn't know about any of it. I, I grew up in a house full of soul food. <laughs> like, I didn't really understand or anything like that. Even in college, I didn't really. Because you eat up at the, at the school and everything there is not healthy. Like, I didn't learn it until I started hanging with winners like V, who's, you know, who's a personal trainer. So, you know, it's never too late. Athlete, I believe athletes are people, kids that understand the value in their training, the value in work ethic, and want to know, A, how they can get better on a daily basis. Take the criticism that you have. Athletes can take criticism. And there's a difference between constructive criticism and destructive criticism. And when you have good coaches, they understand that value of, of constructive criticism versus deconstructive criticism. But athletes know that. Athletes know how to take a challenge, accept a challenge, what they need for their bodies to be ready and prepared. And it's a constant push every, 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 every single day. And it doesn't matter kids that can barely run to begin with. If they want to run harder, they're going to figure it out. They're going to figure out how to run harder. So let's get into, uh, I want to get into coaches a little bit. I'm, I might be digging under the skin here. <laughs> um, and I'm going to kick this off by saying that since I moved here, I've seen some of the most selfish coaches slash parent volunteers that I've ever met in my entire life. And you can judge me if you want, but like I said, this podcast is not sugar-coated and it's not for, for the fame of hearing. When we first started basketball, I wasn't officially coaching. My kids started playing. My daughter, I'm about six feet tall. My daughter is nine years old and she's almost my same height. That is not uh, an over-exaggeration. She's literally almost my same height. So when we first started getting into basketball, the first year was great. She was learning. Like I said, she's taller, so she's kind of figuring out her body a little bit more. She was more afraid to like knock them over and hurt them. She really wasn't playing to her full potential. So Leon asked if I would have her play with the boys team and I was like okay you know I think that'd be good and literally from there just skyrocket in half a season she was named this year um, as being one of the top players in 2016 for AAU which is where elite basketball players go to train and play in tournaments and that would have never happened had we made that switch and why I say coaches are are selfish is when we see other players on other teams that we feel like, hey, they need to be, they need to step up, they need to come out to these tournaments with us, et cetera. We would go talk to these coaches, and these coaches are so worried about their damn YMCA record, like, as you know what I'm saying? And yeah, like, I, I'm just keep it real. That shit is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You have kids that have a potential to be better, to do better, and to step outside of the walls or hills or whatever you want to call it of Eugene Springfield. And their coaches won't let them because they're afraid to break up their YMCA team or their kids sports team, and they don't want to affect, affect their record. So what are you really saying? Do you really care about your kids, your kid one, the entire kid, all the kids on the team, or just your record and how it looks to be a YMCA coach having a 25 and 0, whatever, knowing that you're not going to go be a college coach? I think that's absolute bullshit. 
Sorry. <laughs> a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I didn't see it. And I think most that look like other other parents don't want their kid coached by other other coaches. Like, you know, he what V was talking about was, you know, we came across a kid and we thought he was pretty good, but his dad coached him uh, probably his whole life. So I, I don't think that he wanted to venture outside of what he's telling him. Like, you know, we was going to tell them some wrong information. So we, we put Athletes United together to so we can venture out these woods and into the city and try to help kids succeed and excel past just the valley. You know, you're not great until you play somebody else great. So we try to get our kids into a place to where they can play other kids that's way better than me. And like we even went to some tournaments where we seen eight year olds, seven year olds shooting three pointers from NBA range. Like some of our kids couldn't even shoot a three uh, a free, free throw. throw. So <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we're undefeated here. You know, we're winning we're beating kids here, beating teams here like by 30, 40 points. <laughs> you get out to you know, somewhere else and, and see some real greatness. And I enjoy it. I can coach these kids to, to be way better and know that it's not a limit to their learning. It is unfortunate when coaches are just worried about their own personal um, accolades, so to speak. You should always um, be there for the athlete, first and foremost, to the best of your ability. And that's what it's really about. I think parents hinder that, too. I think parents, um, and I am a parent, and you know, I'm sorry if this hits home, but if it hits home, there's probably a reason for it. But parents, I've heard this a lot. I don't want my kid to play up because I'm afraid of this. I don't want my kid to do this because I'm afraid of this. I don't want, and then I've heard, well, I don't, I, you know, they're gonna play, they've been playing with this team for two years, and, but here, what, what okay, here's the deal. What is playing with that particular team for two years have to do with your own child's ability to excel. Playing with that same team for two years, winning in these these little tournaments, and you know that your your kid, or you have a coach that's telling you that your kid has a great potential to be better than where they're at. We're not trying to take them away from that team. We're not trying to break up these in-house teams. What we're wanting is we're wanting kids that have that potential to allow that potential to grow by putting them in programs that will force them to excel because they're challenged and they have to compete to get better. A lot of times, um, parents will hinder their kid's ability before the kid even does it, or not understanding what the importance of conditioning. I don't know if I want to get into this one. <laughs> but I, like I said, I have, I have kids, and what I want is my kids are naturally athletic. They are going to get better, but I know that they're not going to get as good as they possibly can be with the programming that's out there right now. I've, I've gotten to see a lot of growth in the kids, both in football and basketball, because of the coaching and getting kids to understand that balance of school, sports, family and friends at an earlier age so that they're much better prepared for, for college and they don't go into college thinking, oh yeah, I was, I was the MVP of my high school in this state, in this small area, and then they get a college scholarship and then they ride on the bench and they don't understand why. I don't think most of these parents know what, what competitive means. Like you said, they rather settle for the YMCA means, but if you got a baller, a competitive athlete that needs more, why not, you know, let him go venture out and see more and better things? We have trouble with that because some parents, they don't want their kids to travel, you know, because we have fundraisers, we, you know, to be able to help them kids that's unfortunate, to be able to be fortunate and to go in places. And but parents don't want to you know, invest in their kids like that for just a time. So. I'm going to go on that with just kind of go on to the financial cost. We have tried to get parents to understand, like when we do these 
um, tournaments, they, there is a cost to it, but it's not, none of the coaches, we're not getting paid. When we actually have coaches that come on that are not the organizers, then there might be a stipend included for them for travel and that sort of thing. But if you want good quality coaching, you know, don't, don't complain that your kid's not getting better. Don't complain that, you know, they haven't excelled when you're putting them into these programs. And the only reason why you're putting them into these programs is because they're cheap. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that with the utmost respect. I, free clinics are great. We do them all the time. But if you're going to put money towards your kiddo, build them on a foundation, a foundation that they can grow from. We don't know. None of us know whether our kids or the kids that we work with, none of us know whether or not those kids are going to make it into um, college or whatever. We don't know that. But we can prepare them for that if that's something they decide to do in the future and the better foundational skills that they have now, the more likely they're going to be able to succeed in that. The more prepared they're going to feel, the more confident that they're going to feel. You know, we started doing these, we got our 14th um, free youth clinic, martial arts themed youth clinic, uh, September 24th. We got a little bit of uh, fitness involved, we'll have like a little fitness CrossFit section or something like that. Um, I think, I could be wrong, but I think mixed martial arts, you know, it's been around for 20 years or so, I think it kind of was the original CrossFit, you know, with the style, different styles that you have to, you know, be proficient at to excel in the sport, and that's just blended. Um, as far as kids are concerned, you know, that's, that's a little bit different, you know, the competitive side of things. But we just want to cast a wide net and bring as many possible kids as possible. I, uh, I said this a long time ago, the, the youth seminars are always going to be free. We're going to keep doing these every three months in the community. and. We want the children to come in for one because hey when they come out to your guys' programs and you know playing other sports and anything they do in life we want them to hear good choices they always make good choices keep good company stay away from drugs and alcohol um i talk about it all the time if you look up checker pass you know um <clears throat> that's wi-fi just to carry that message because i know in my personal life you know like i was starting to excel i was playing varsity as a freshman and um, I think I was in the Sacramento area. I was winning, I was fourth in scoring, and I was top five in scoring and rebounding uh, my senior year. And then I started partying again, with, and my numbers just plummeted. You know, it's not about the numbers, so to speak, but I remember all that. What happened that time when I started partying? And then my numbers plummeted. You know, I put on weight. I started missing practice. I started acting a little outrageous, aggressive, extra aggressive, so to speak. So I was always an aggressive person. That helps in sports, to be honest, you know, if you're responsible with it. That's what I'm trying to stop in these youth clinics. We don't, we don't talk about it, like, the whole time. It's, I, just, I just share it, just a, a little snippet, just a little, little window in the clinic when the kids are there and they're all paying attention, they're all looking at us. Um, but I'm the one that actually carries that message um, first and foremost because it's on my heart, you know, to wreck my life, you know, I'm on my ninth life. I don't want to see no children out there go through what I went through and a lot of other people. To be honest, it's drug prevention. There's a huge need for that all across this country. And so, you know, at the same token, then you get to plant the seeds of physical fitness with these kids. Teamwork, camaraderie, there's just a lot of good positivity going on there. So, Just, I mean, to touch base on that, like, you know, we've been there before, so, you know, we know how to lead kids away from where they won't go down that road. To if they can understand it and if they can spell it, then it's good to to be taught. So that's what even my son is a nine-year-old. I always teach him and, and tell him always to stay away from drugs. And, you know, if you ever think you in the car with somebody that's drunk or that's not acting right, then... Call me as soon as they don't get in that car, and you know, just things like that. You know, it's always good to to have them learn and things early, so they won't have to go through it when they get to high school and they can stay away from that type of stuff. It's good parenting, you know. It's just like coaches, everybody. You know, we're all kind of like parents, man. It's like a big community of parenting. You know, if you ask me, I don't have any kids at this point. I want some eventually. I think that's the next chapter for me. Um, but you know, I think we all have a responsibility to this community. Um, I think you mentioned about role models. Somebody used the word role models earlier. I mean, we all got a, a responsibility to be role models in this community. From an athlete perspective, and I, we hear a lot that parents feel that kids are too young to take on aggressive training or competitive training. Remember that kids, 
kids learn and pick up their motor schools skills from the time that they're four years old. I'm going to highlight Joe DeFranco's um, NFL Combine Prep. And what they talk about is they're taking these athletes that have played college sports that are, you know, their whole life. They played sports their entire life. And the first week of that college prep program is getting them to reassess the value in their movement. So the whole first week of their combine prep training is getting them to move better. Like hinge work, uh, you know, the better that your bodies can move, the more functional you're going to be as an athlete. Um, and so when, when people say that their kid is too young to be pushed, your kids are probably far stronger than, than we are as adults in most cases. And they're like sponges, so the, their mental capacity, their brain capacity, they can soak in so much more um, than what they do as an adult. And by learning these things, they're building functional habits for future sports and just, just health and movement in general. I've seen a lot of, of, of parents giving their kiddos an excuse to give up, and I think that's really unfortunate. I understand not pushing kids too hard, um, I've also seen that as a coach. I've seen parents that have just really driven their kids into the ground as far as just wanting them to surpass expectations that, you know, of, um, of what the kiddo can actually achieve. And they end up getting their kid from loving the sport to really just hating it and just wanting to pull back. So there's definitely like a balance in that how and when to push the kiddo. But I've heard uh, in one instance, actually a couple instances, um, my kid doesn't feel like they're good enough. Well, you just, when you're pulling a kid from a program because they think that they're not good enough, you basically just told your kid that they're not good enough because you didn't push them to at least try. And I think that's unfair, um, especially if you have coaches that are telling you, yes, they're good enough. They just need a little bit more time for development. If you can get a child to understand that, they're not going to want to give up every time something's hard for them or every time they have to be challenged to go up against, you know, just life in general. Don't, don't give your kids an excuse to give up on something because they're not quite confident. That's where you come in. That's your most important job is helping them understand their true potential. Right. It's mostly like if, if, a, if the parents is going through their own personal problems and I had some to where they took their kids out of sports so they can deal with their problems. And you know, Nowadays, it's all about the upbringing. It's all about the kids. And the only way that they can get better in life is if they stay on a steady pace doing the same thing. If you taking a kid in and out of sport or something that, you know, or go into his full potential. And like with what Jimmy was talking about, the drug and alcohol prevent prevention, um, sports is, is a huge way to, to alleviate that stressor. Um, by keeping kids busy, doing something productive throughout the year. And it doesn't, you know, there's always kiddos that fall through the cracks and that's kind of the outreach portion of Athletes United is to help with that as well, to keep kids from falling out of the cracks. So we also have a program for athletes that aren't quite elite athletes, but they need something and they enjoy playing the sport. They enjoy doing that. And that is to help kids just find something to, to enjoy. You know, when they have family backgrounds that aren't really optimal in terms of, of the American family dream. But, um, you know, and right now, broken families are and blended families are at an uprise, you know. So there's a lot of kiddos that need that attention. They need mentors. I think the Checkered Pass programs are awesome. So if you're in the area and you're looking for, for something to get your kiddos into, the seminars, the, the clinics, we also have clinics. Um, but I think that finding things for, for your kiddos to do as opposed to sitting around and getting themselves into trouble, sports is a really big, big, big part of, of helping that. Build self-esteem. <clears throat> sports build self-esteem, especially like, you know, instead of, you know, winners hanging out with winners. And I personally don't look at like wins and losses as much as like if, uh, you know, if you're out there, you're giving your best, and like you said about your definition of athlete, if you're growing, if you're paying attention to practice, you know, some people are just going to be practice players, you know, but I can remember, you know, rubbing elbows with practice players, and some of those guys, while well, I was actually starting to deviate, and, you know, like I talked about stats falling, you know, when they should have been rising, and all those wonderful moments, and, you know, wherever that would have taken you, 
Um, I even remember seeing practice players coming to practice every day, living a clean life, so to speak, you know, busting their tail at practice, paying attention, and starting to excel and get those gifts and getting some minutes <clears throat> from some of us. You know, I'll say it, a free Madonna at one time. Um, <laughs> you know, that's just the truth, you know. So it's like, you know, one thing I want to say to you know, whoever might be listening out there, you know, every single kid is worth it. Don't give up five minutes before the miracle. But to me, the practice player is just as important as the star. Prefontaine had a, a saying, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Mm-hmm. And that speaks to all people, not just the Olymp- Olympian, you know, gold medal athletes. So, thanks. Um, for those of you guys, I just want to give some, just some insight for parents that are looking for programs um, for their athletes to excel. Identify the value of the cost. So in the cost of what you're paying for, for your kid to get training or whatever, try to figure out what that value is. Are they getting proper fundamental training? Um, are, they, are they allowed to recover properly? Um, do the coaches and the people running the program have your kid's best interest at heart? I think that's really, really important. There are some organizations out there that are not really geared towards helping the, the kids or the people in the program to um, succeed and and to excel. And I think that's really, really important. Um, So those are some questions that you can ask yourself when you're trying to find programs to get your kiddos into. Again, be sure to look up Checkered Past MMA for their um, seminars and clinics. Uh, Stay tuned on the AU page for our clinics and camps. We are gonna be opening up a, a fifth grade competitive basketball team that'll start in YMCA and then we'll train them. We'll be having another set of tryouts for travel teams. Um, And like I said, if you really want your kiddo to really experience elite athletics in its entirety, especially in basketball, you're gonna wanna get them out to some of these AAU tournaments. Also, I take fourth graders and third graders that is above their average uh, grades. We definitely don't limit any of the programs to age. Um, they're definitely more skill-based. So we, you know, we want athletes. We just want athletes that want to excel and be better. Um, we will also have a set of free clinics and camps. So stay tuned for those. Yeah, check us out on Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned next week for uh, our next podcast of relevant issues in youth sports. Thanks.